Hey guys, welcome to the latest episode of Beyond the Tape, a podcast that focuses on people doing rad things in the Australian mountain bike industry. Before we jump into this episode, let me just thank the sponsors that keep this thing running. Um, we have Canyon Bikes. Uh, those guys have been on board for a while now. I've been absolutely loving the Spectral, which is behind me. Um, super tough. Only just did like its first big service on it. Um, everything is running 100%. If it wasn't, I would be able to contact someone in Australia, get everything sorted and worked out really quickly. Thanks to those guys being in Melbourne. Um, they help out really quickly. Any issues, they get sorted. But thankfully, I've had none, so don't know what I'm really talking about. Anyways, if you want a rad bike that can handle, handle everything, the Spectral is for you. Next up, we've got Two Up Bike Company. Those guys are amazing. They do Noble Wheels, DeMonte Lubes, Factor Components. I've been absolutely frothing the Factor pedals. In fact, uh, the Junior Jack has um, been running those pedals as well, and he's absolutely frothing on them. Super reliable, super tough, plenty of rock strikes on them, and they've been epic. Next up, we've got NS Dynamics, Australia's premium suspension service company. They will get your suspension running better than you, even if it is 500 years old. But if it is beyond repair, they also do Olins. They do four-sprung upgrade kits. They do a bunch of DVO suspension as well, all at good pricing. So hit Aaron up and the boys up there and they'll be able to get you sorted. Keeping me comfortable now is Frank Clothing from WA, a super lightweight, really well thought out design, absolutely frothing on those jerseys. Even had a crash in one and it survived really well. So stoked on that kit. Jump over there, use Beyond the Tape and get a discount with those guys. Um, Dirt Surfer as well, if you go over there and use Beyond the Tape, you'll get a 15% off of a 100% recyclable, 100% recycled um, custom dirt mudguard if you want. Um, they do have their own cool designs, but if you want to get something unique done for your shop or your event, hit up Alan over there and he'll get you sorted. Uh, Fist Gloves as well. Those guys are giving out a 10% discount on uh, Beyond the Tape as well. So if you want to grab some Fist Gloves, use those as well. They're amazing. Absolutely frothing on them. Save my hand in this crash as well. Super tough, super reliable and Aussie designed. Crush have been keeping my bikes clean for a while now. Love those guys. Make sure you head out to your local shop and get them to stock them. They, their degreaser, their cleaner, everything is next level, but their afterwash care is primo. Absolutely loving their stuff. Um, anyway, that's enough of the sponsors. Hitting up three minutes now on sponsor plugs. There is a new one coming as well. Stay tuned for that. Actually, let's not forget Manscaped. Bit odd coming into this episode and describing manscaped but they have their painted lawn mower out now uh ceramic blade so there is super accurate cutting um, with very very little cutting of things that you don't want to be cut we don't want to end up with flow pay and have one of the boys hanging out of the sack it is super easy to use keeps everything nice and tidy downstairs and i've been frothing on it uh i was actually asked to be an extra in gorillas in the mist um I've been mistaken for a zoo animal while visiting the zoo as well, just due to the amount of hair. But Manscaped has now got me looking better than ever, except for this damn haircut. God damn, it's horrible. Anyway, jump over there, use Beyond the Tape uh, as a code, get 20% off of all their stuff. They're going big in Australia, really high quality products, and I've been frothing on them. Anyway, let's move on to our guest. Our guest is Elise Empey, Australia's second fastest woman. At 17 years old, she not only took the win of the U19 national champs, she smashed it. She was only a few seconds off of Shana Hearn in elite, so she is the second fastest woman in the country at 17. Now, she's a little bit shy. She was a little bit nervous. Obviously, at that age, you haven't done too many interviews so we kept it short we kept it sweet and went through a few things we talk about her family we talk about how she got riding and about how she's going and her training and everything like that so hopefully you enjoy this one um if any of my sponsors or if anyone that is listening out there wants to help elise out make sure you hit up her up on instagram um or the mp factory racing team so as usual grab beer grab water grab a wine grab whatever makes you happy and enjoy this episode
<laughs> Sweet. Well, Elise MP, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for coming on. Hey, thank you for having me. <laughs> Is this like your first interview or, or anything to do with mountain biking? Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's surprising. It could be <laughs> interesting. <laughs> See how it goes. Definitely going to be interesting. It's not often I get to chat to like juniors that are kind of coming up and well, not really just coming up with your case, but like juniors like on the, the cusp of going big. How's yeah. that? How's that kind of feeling for you at the moment? Um, I think it's pretty cool, like just watching your progress and things and seeing how you're going and seeing like the work you're putting in starting to pay off a bit more. It's like the so cool. Mm. Yeah. What like so for those at home who don't know who you are and don't pay attention to to fast people, uh, do you want to just give us like a, a quick brief overview of who you are and what you're gonna do? Um, yeah, so I'm Elise, as you said before. And I like to ride bikes, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, ski a bit as well. And Okay. Yeah, not much. <laughs> I love I love how it's just you like to ride bikes and you ski. Like, they're <laughs> just your passions. But for those who don't know, you were first in juniors at Nationals and then yeah. second fastest woman of the day by... I think you're only like five seconds off of Shian, I think. Oh, I think it might have been a spoon a bit more, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And she's no slouch. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sweet. You seem pretty humble, like you don't seem to to, to mention that kind of thing much. Oh, oh. <laughs> try and be. Yeah. That's the other thing. <laughs> no, good. What was the uh, the experience like for you at that Nationals oh. weekend, like going to that track and, and seeing it all? Oh, I was like so nervous and like seeing the big jumps on the Instagram, I was like freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, I wouldn't be able to hit them. But no, nah, we got them in the end and yeah, it's such a good week and it was really good. But, yeah. Is it anything like what you ride at home or is it was it like a complete um, shock to the systems? Yeah, so, like, at home we've got, like, fairly techy tracks and things, but we don't really have any roots. So, like, riding the roots and when they got wet, I was like, oh, my God, like, <laughs> what even is this? But, no, nah, it was good. It was super fun, so. Because it got really wet on practice day, right? Like, oh, no, qualies. Yeah. yeah. It was really bad. Yeah. <laughs> it was such a loose qualies to run. <laughs> <laughs> I think almost was everyone was, like, stressing for that one, hey? Yeah. It was, like... Oh, no, it was good fun. But. Is that Was that your first Nationals kind of campaign or were you there last year at Bright? Yeah, um, it was my third one. So okay. Pretty good, but yeah. Good on the map. Yeah. And, <laughs> was it, was it, how'd you go at Bright last year? The same kind of thing um, or was it a little bit different? Yeah, I went all right. It was a pretty, it was more of like a, rougher sort of track just because it's been there a fair bit while longer mm. like <laughs> yeah that no, was it's, fun too it's been there a while and no one's done any work to that track since it was built I think, <laughs> yeah. So. yeah and how how was it traveling because if you've been to three like at least two out of those three were bright correct yeah which is which kind is, of your home home country yeah it's really good. It's really close. So we could get over there a few times to practice as well. Mm. But, yeah. But then going to a brand new downhill track in May Dana would have been a bit of a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> and like last time we were there, I like hurt my elbow. <laughs> I was a bit nervous oh, right. like, to have another injury, but no, nah, it was all good. Yeah. And that all and, right. And now, yeah, well, clearly <laughs> like the results <laughs> speak for themselves, but how it, was it all kind of worth it? Was how was getting down the hill and seeing your result? Like it was pretty epic. Yeah, I was like so stoked, and we had like a way bigger category as well mm. than usual. Like I think we had like ten girls, so 
I was just like so stoked that we had like such a big category and then like mm. it was a lot tighter than it has been in the past as well. So it was just mm. such a cool week. I think like 10% of the entrants were women, if I remember correct. Yeah. There was, so was like massive. so many more. Like on every shuttle bus you got on, I was like, oh my God, there's another girl. Like what is this? <laughs> but, no. why, why do you think that is like from your perspective? Um, I'm not sure. I think there's like a lot more girls who are kind of like a bit like me who would watch their brothers or people mm-hmm. they knew ride and be like, oh, I'm going to do that too or something. But I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> which is good. I've seen that. I, th- I think that's uh, pretty common. Hey, like they see their brothers. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah so. Is that is that how you got into the sport then? Like through watching your brothers ride and stuff? Yeah, like we'd always go to the races and watch like my dad and older brother compete. And I got to the point where I was like, oh, this is boring. I reckon I could do just as well. But <laughs> nah, got so you're fast. you faster than them now? Only one of them. Still got to catch the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Which one are you faster than your dad? Oh, uh, yeah. And the <laughs> younger brother. Yeah. That's it. getting there. <laughs> Like you, you're only seventeen, right? And you've been riding for like yeah. three or four years. Like, how? Yeah. Was, how was? It's not that far for you to wind back. When I usually ask people to wind back, it's like twenty years. Um, <laughs> how was your your first kind of experience on the bike and racing? Oh my god, I was so nervous. <laughs> like, <laughs> I couldn't even like walk up to the registrations without like shaking. <laughs> They like were telling me to calm down and things like the ladies at the counter, <laughs> and I was just like, "Oh my god!" But uh, pretty overwhelming. Yeah, right. Was that yeah. just because there was like you were the only only, only girl, or was it just daunting because you were you were racing a bike as fast as you could down a hill? Um, I think because it was one of the Vic rounds that at that stage they didn't have like junior categories, so I had to race elite, which was like super intimidating and then I was at Didi and Matthew like my older brother kept telling me like how hard the track was and things so <laughs> I was just like so nervous to come into it but nah but, he was probably just trying to psych you out a little bit he probably knew you were faster <laughs> maybe <laughs> so yeah so you followed your, your dad and your brother's footpath like was downhill yeah. always going to be your, your kind of path um I actually thought I'd do cross country and then we did like one or two of them. And then I did it in enduro because that's where like dad and Matthew always went. And mm. that was good. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll do enduro, not cross country. And then I did a downhill. And I was like, oh, I'm not going back to either. <laughs> but, but, why, why was that? Just the climbing? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that as well as like, I don't know. There's always such a good like vibe at a downhill race as well. And it's mm. just so cool. But yeah. It's much better getting a, a shuttle up to the top. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> Definitely. Was it? So if you were so young, you would have been, like, what bike did you kind of start out on back in the day? Um, I had a, um, a Liv Hail. Okay, this was like cool. My first, like, proper suspension, uh, what's it called? <laughs> a suspension like bike, a yeah. Yeah, <laughs> which was, like, really good and that yep. worked. So, yeah. Were you quite quite fast off the bat? Were you no. up the top? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not, but worked well. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did you, I guess like you're obviously, you got your brothers and your, your dad and stuff there obviously riding with you and stuff, but yeah. how did you go about, getting faster and, and, and kind of learning to race and, and stuff like that? Um, well, I, when I started, my dad had just come off, like, injury. So, like, okay. he was still slowly getting back into it. So, like, I started, like, riding with him, could keep up with him, like, got better slowly. And then, like, we'd always ride with his friends and I'd just try, try and pick up one each time. <laughs> <laughs> just the Strava yeah. times? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, so, like, we... Uh, so were you kind of focused on getting better then it sounds like you were yeah um fairly competitive <laughs> i don't <laughs> like to lose that much but yeah so work hard 
and then I just wanted to beat my dad pretty bad so we were like pretty neck and neck for a while so no it was good how's how's he feel about you getting faster than him um I don't think he liked it at first but I don't think he likes it too much now either but no he's good with him (laughs) um What's it, what's it like coming from like a, a family that's like, has it been difficult trying to keep the family vibe going while being so competitive with each other? Cause it sounds <laughs> like there could be some rough, rough rides home in the car. Possibly. Uh, no, it's pretty good. Like everyone's pretty supportive and it's good. Like you get over it eventually when they beat you. But <laughs> no. I think because like everything's a competition in our household, <laughs> like not much yep. different. But, yeah, <laughs> that sounds so good. Um, what do you, what? I'm just trying to think of of where to go, but Sorry. you're you're obviously like you're getting competitive and you're riding and you're getting into it and stuff. What were you thinking? I guess. In regards to to competitiveness, do you have any goals or did you have any goals where you wanted to go with your riding? Um, Yeah, so I kind of always wanted to do well at races and things Mm. and try and get better and better and, like, work my way up. Or, like, I'd pick a ride and I'd be like, I want to beat them at, like, this next race and try and achieve that. And then if I didn't beat them, I'd, like, go home and be like, oh, my God, (laughs) and then just work at it for the next one. And just like little things like that, but yeah. And then did you think you'd ever be kind of at the top of women's racing in Australia? Like, was that something you wanted to do? Um, Yeah, for sure. And I think because there was like such a lack of girls at the time as well, mm. I'd just be like, oh, I want to I be like a girl who like helps make a change and like get yeah, closer cool. to the guys. Like we're still a long way off, but. You know, it's getting closer. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. Did you, were you competing like against the men in most of the races? Did you find like you'd, uh, you'd kind of compare your time to men's times as well? Yeah, like I would have our own categories, but I'd always like compare them to the guys and be like, oh my God, I'm still so far away. Or I've like moved up, but you mm. know, <laughs> getting there. I think like it's, that's like a trait that you see in a lot of the fast people is they always look at the people, but they're comparing themselves against the faster. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I remember yeah. there was like an interview with Troy Brosnan and he said like, even though he was racing as a junior, he would always just be like, where'd I come in the elite field? Yeah. And, and I think that's the best way to go about it. <laughs> but you're, you're, all this time you've you've been in in school, like you're in year eleven now, right? So, how's riding and and kind of managing your your training and stuff and and getting on the bike? Um, it's pretty good. Like I can get a bit distracted sometimes, but like all my teachers have been like really supportive. Like we had mm. nationals at the start of the year, we missed like two weeks, and like I just didn't do schoolwork and I should have done some because I was like way behind but they were all really supportive and catching me up and things and you know yeah. since like I did the work they were happy to help me and so it was pretty good but yeah yeah there was a, a mate of mine who was doing his like engineering university homework like in between oh. runs in the cafe <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think it's more of a common sight than people think yeah but are you like heading out on rides after school and stuff and, and trying to make the most of, of the time or how's it kind of planning and stuff? Yeah. For you? Um, so I like work a few days a week and then when I'm not working, I'm tending to go to the gym after school just cause mm. like with the bus trip, by the time you get home, you don't have as much time. And then yeah, we'll ride like on the weekends and try and get as much in. Okay. But, yeah. Changes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're already in the gym training already. Like that's that's dedication. <laughs> yeah, like it helps you when you break, so recover yeah. quicker from things. So yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Are 
Are you, have you got a trainer and stuff? Or? Uh, nah. Like, the person who owns that gym in town just, like, helped me do a program, and I just do that most of the time. But mm. that, yeah. yeah. That's pretty rad. <laughs> You're obviously pretty serious about it, then. <laughs> yeah. Look, I would like to do, like, well, but mm. just to work hard at it, I guess. But, yeah. It- I remember when I was in high school, I barely had enough focus to to go on one class. So it's pretty crazy that you can do elite level racing and be at school at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, coming back after nationals, though, I should have done more because I was like so stressed trying to get the work done. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. So, have you, do you do much of the national level racing outside of national champs? How's it kind of work for you? Um, I guess you're pretty lucky like with, in Melbourne. Yeah. So we've got like the Vic round mm. and some of them are like the tier one. I don't fully understand it, but like those ones. And so we'll like do all them and the Vic rounds and some of the Enduros as well. But other than that, we don't really travel too far. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess you're pretty lucky over there because you've got such a high caliber, like of racing. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's really good. <laughs> But you haven't, like, travelled to, like, Queensland or, or done any, like, major national kind of travelling? Uh, not yet. Like, okay. we went to Adelaide for the Enduro. Oh, you did? Yeah, that, cool. Yeah, yeah. Other than that, we haven't really gone that far. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Was that the national Enduro at Fox? Yeah, yeah. yeah. How'd you like that? Oh, <laughs> There was a lot of pedaling, but other than that, it's like pretty good. We don't have any steep. We don't have the steep hills and stuff that we've got over there, so there's a lot of pedaling. Oh, it was brutal. It wasn't very fit either for it. <laughs> it was good. What? What? Like, is downhill your more kind of specific, like the what you love to do more than an enduro, and and why is that? Yeah, I don't know. I think I really like just the short burst, like yeah, okay. just one period and like being able to like revise the track and actually know what you're going in for instead of like only having two or one or two like laps on it and being like, oh, I still don't know it and I still mm. don't know what this gap is kind of thing. But yeah. How do you, how do you, have you developed like a, a way that you go about memorizing and revising a track and stuff yet or? Um. Not really. Like, I'll, like, pick points and things that I try and stick to, but <laughs> what happens when I'm writing tends to change a bit. But, yeah. <laughs> yep. So, good. yeah, it's it sounds like you're super chill, but also super focused, which is good. And, like, what's it been like kind of, I guess, like, you're 17, so you're pretty pretty young in the scheme of things, but... You're up at the, the top level. Your parents are obviously pretty supportive as well, but have you? how's things been trying to get support for your racing and, and trying to perhaps branch out that way? Um, Like, yeah, so my parents have been really good and will, like, help support me in getting bikes and stuff. And then I also have, like, a clothing sponsor. Mm-hmm. So they, like, give me all the clothes. But other than, and, like, Crash will, like, give us some stuff. But other than that, we kind of get it all by ourselves, and I haven't really, we haven't really branched out like for any sponsors or anything, just because mm. I'm not sure how to go about it or like where to start. But yeah, something okay. I'm definitely keen to look at. Yeah. Do you think like that information's hard for you to kind of find, like how to yeah. to go about it? Yeah, and it's like I just don't know where to start with it. Like you know, there's so many, and I don't really know if I. <laughs> want this one like and they start sponsoring me like it's yeah it's tricky yeah. i guess do you think that helps you almost like focus on your writing a little bit if you're not too worried about that type of thing oh i, re- I reckon it does in some respects because like i don't have to worry mm. about like doing instagram posts or like doing anything for them it's like such i can just like mm. ride my bike and do it however i want like which is pretty cool yeah yeah like uh, one big thing we always kind of get into, especially with the Chai and, and Baxter, but 
like social media is such a big part of writing you know and for like anyone coming up in juniors like it must be tough to try and become sponsored with without it you're not yeah. really on there as much right like from what i can see yeah yeah i'm not very good at <laughs> posting <laughs> rather content man why is that you just not interested or oh i don't know i just I get too like anxious about it in a way, and it, okay. I just I don't like the hassle of it. Like I'll do it after a race sometimes, but yeah. <laughs> other than that, I don't tend to do much. Yeah, I think that's yeah. If you yeah, it can be both like good and bad. Fortunately, yeah. that seems to be a big part of the industry right now. But and. But you you don't even like so all your bikes and stuff you pay for all that you you're obviously working and and going ahead and and self supporting it yeah yeah <laughs> um how how are your parents with like watching you grow and and watching you kind of get so good at the sport what are they have <laughs> how do they kind of go about supporting you in other ways other than just buying your bikes and stuff um. Like, so they'll help me. They'll, like, go to town and do all the trips I need to get me to and from the gym and things. And they'll take me to all the races and organize the economy. And I don't really need to worry about any of that stuff. <laughs> and then <laughs> since Dad likes riding more than I do, I think, <laughs> or just <laughs> as much, <laughs> he's always trying to go riding on the weekend. So we pull each other along, which is good in that respect for training. Mm. So. Do you- so yeah, they must be driving you everywhere, and you haven't got your license and stuff yet. But not yet. <laughs> <laughs> when you do, you out like every weekend on the bike, you reckon? Oh, and... that sorry. <laughs> when when you do get your license, do you think it's going to be harder to kind of get out to the races and stuff, or are you just going to keep the the parent support going? Oh uh, look, I think Dad wants to go to them just as much as I do. <laughs> I think it'll still it'll still be pretty good, but nah, it might be a bit better. It'll just give you a bit more flexibility when they can't take you to places. So mm. that'd be good. And so when when you're at a, a race, do you have like a, a preparation or a kind of schedule that you go through to to get ready and, and get prepared for the race? Um normally I do unless I'm like running late, which often happens. <laughs> but yeah, no, I like <laughs> do like two or three runs just so I don't make myself tired and then like I'll just try and like just sit there calmly before the run and think about my lines and try and relax but it doesn't always work <laughs> <laughs> so do you do you do much throughout the track walk and stuff you look at much over there or at, at the track walk oh, or yeah. do you just kind of just jump on your bike and go I forgot about that part. Yeah, <laughs> I do do the track walk and look at lines and like possible like gaps or something you could hit. But mm. yeah, are you doing that with your your parents and your brothers and stuff at the same time? Yeah, I tend to do that like with my brother or some of his friends and stuff. Yeah, but it just depends on the race. <laughs> and what's the kind of women's field like for you in Melbourne at the moment? Is it pretty strong? Um. Yeah, so I'm actually from Manson, but right. all the and same to me. So it's, yeah, so it's pretty small, but like I'm yep. lucky because I've got like one girl my age who's like really good okay. friends with, and we get the ride all the time, which is really lucky. Like, because there's not many, but there's a few girls like close by as well, so we like sometimes mm-hmm. catch up for a ride and things. But that's sick. Yeah, very. <laughs> and is it tight racing as well? there or are you oh. is it pretty yeah. like far apart for competition uh some races uh like far apart but like this year there was like so much tighter for girls i found like mm. we actually had to like push it and it's like not like sounding rude or anything like but you know yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. has that pushed your riding as well then yeah, I reckon it definitely has just because I was like, oh, my God, I don't want you beating me. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I started, like, pushing it a lot harder, which is really cool. Are you racing the, the junior women's class there or you just jumped into elite? Uh, we'll just, like, race elite for the state rounds. 
Okay. Because there's like more girls in the categories and things. Mm. In the category, sorry. Yeah. But, how many how many ladies are in a, a elite category over there? At the, at the um, there's usually about like ten ish, roughly. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So definitely growing, which is really cool. Mm. Hopefully, see there, more next year. Oh, it's growing like every year. It seems to be getting bigger and bigger, yeah. which is so good. Um, who are some of the riders that you've kind of been looking up to over this time? Um. Oh, so many. I think like there's so many, like Sean and like Tracy. And then there's like Vali and all those girls overseas. And they're just like so fast. And you're just like, oh my God, like I want to be that fast. <laughs> and you like see how hard they work and like how fast they're getting. And just like, oh, that's so cool. But yeah. Yeah, Vali's been unstoppable up until her injury. Oh. She's going so fast. It's insane. I don't, oh, God, I'm excited about yeah. Have you kind of raced to get? Oh, obviously, Sean's probably the, the closest, most competitive girl in Australia, other than Tracy. Um, but she doesn't shop too many national rounds anymore. Yeah. But have you kind of talked to Sean or talked to any kind of, of the older ladies that have been killing it and shredding? Do you kind of talk to them and get advice, or are you just on your own plan? <laughs> Um, I talked to like I never really met any of them until this year. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And I was like, so yeah, like this year at nationals, like a few of them were just being like, oh hey, like how's the track? And I was like, oh my god, like this girl just said <laughs> hi to me, and I was just like, oh, I couldn't answer. <laughs> but <laughs> no, nah, they're talking to me. And Sean like like offered to take me like for a lap and things at Threadbay when we went up there, which was like really cool. Yeah, sick. Yeah. You, would it, yeah. You. Because you beat like Has and then Shelly as well. Like you, you beat a few of them and Laura as well. Like, what was, did, was it? Did you ride with Has much when you were up in May Dana as well? That like Harriet? Or oh. she was probably on her own program doing stunts <laughs> and everything. But yeah. <laughs> um, no, I didn't really ride with many of them okay. or any of them actually. Like, I rode with some of the other junior girls, but not the elite. But, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do you ever kind of just get towed in by your brother or, or your dad, or do you ever follow any of the elite men through stuff just to try and push it a little bit further and see if you can beat those uh, yeah. guys? Well, I was like really lucky this year at Chance because there was like a group of guys who were like <laughs> were happy for me just to follow them down. Yeah. Okay. And so I got the they like their lines, which was like so helpful, and they towed me into the big jumps and things, which was good. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you know who they were? Or? Yeah, I was like, um, do you know like Ollie Davis and those guys that like group? Yeah. yeah. So we were with them for a bit. A bit intimidating, do, but. Do <laughs> I know Ollie Davis? I think everyone <laughs> should know Ollie Davis. <laughs> I think so. Were you pretty stoked to see him do so well at the World Cup? Like, he had a good race. Yeah. Oh, it's so cool to watch. And, like, when Troy was coming down as well, we were, like, sitting on our edge of the seat <laughs> and our screen glitched out at the last minute and then we're just like, okay. oh, my God, like, this <laughs> happening. <laughs> no, it's pretty good. Is it pretty inspiring to see Troy and, I guess, Ollie as well? Because Ollie's, what, your age? He's only 16, 17, I guess. Yeah. Like, is it pretty... What's it like watching those guys on, on TV? Oh, it's so sick. And you like see them, you're just like, oh my God, I want to be there. Like, I want to be a part of that. And like, you see those massive like race villages and like everything they get to do and things. And you're just like, oh my God, that looks so cool. Like, imagine doing that for a living. Like, mm. but yeah. yeah. That's pretty sick. And yeah. how was, how was following Ollie into those big jumps? Cause they were massive. Oh. <laughs> Oh, they were so big and they would all go over them so casually and I'd just be like squealing every time. <laughs> no, it was really good. They were all like such smooth riders, so it was good to follow them. Yeah. What and I guess like you're following into jumps and stuff, but what do you think you need to do to follow them kinda of in there and make your own path to getting overseas? Like it's something you want to do, but how do you kind of plan about yeah. going doing it? Um 
Well, like we were hoping to maybe get to Europe to do an IXS Cup this year, but like because of Corona, that obviously hasn't happened. But I think I'm not too sure. I'm planning to maybe go over next year and do an mm-hmm. EWS and Tassie or something and just see mm-hmm. how it all pans out. But yeah, I haven't really thought about that yet. Just <laughs> <laughs> hoping to get there somehow. <laughs> I think it's it's got to be pretty tough for juniors right now because yeah. I mean Ollie's pretty lucky because he had the 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 union help him out and he's got Dean Lucas and and stuff in his corner. But for a lot of juniors, like it's it's tough right now to to think about how to get over there. Yeah. It's like, we, go oh, ahead. You go. No, you go. Oh, you so, go. Uh, uh, I was just gonna say like. Yeah. Oh. There's a delay, so like every time you start talking, it's like when I do. Oh. That's all right. Go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, we're like thinking of maybe getting to like the EWSs in Tassie because we mm. should be able to get to them, but it just depends on my fitness, <laughs> how that's going. <laughs> um, I was going to, uh, like, it was this year's been, last year was pretty bad, but this year's kind of toned down a bit, but like, Australia cycling isn't sending kind of anyone to world champs or anything or, or helping out much with that, which is what they'd usually do. Has that kind of affected you much or? Yeah. So I was like hoping just COVID depending that we would be able to get over, but like we can't and that's all right. I guess like there's always next year and the year after if next year doesn't work. So it just would have been nice to, if next year doesn't work either to have it a junior race, but <laughs> we'll yeah, see. true. Yeah, because you yeah. only, yeah, because you've only got a couple of years for juniors. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? Why do you want to get over there? So, like, what? What entices oh. you about going overseas and racing? Oh, I don't know. I think just like there's such big races over there, and there's so many good riders over there. Like, and just watching it and the experience you'd get would be like so cool. But yeah, and the terrain and everything just oh. looks epic. Just everything. So, and so, yeah. You, you, so you got the clothing sponsor on board for now, but to get overseas, <laughs> like it's going to be pretty, pretty tough. Like, yeah. <laughs> have you kind of thought any plans about it, or or thought anything oh, about that, or I, I guess you got school and you got work and you got other things as well. Yeah. But... Oh. Yeah, so I've just been like working and trying to save up for <laughs> something to help me get yep. over there, and that probably won't help too much. <laughs> how much I would say, but you know, we'll see. I'm not. Yeah, everything's so expensive as well now too, but. Mm. It's a bit tricky. So, uh, what bikes you on at the moment? As well, I asked you just before we started, but what are you kind of riding at the moment? Um. So, like. I'm on both specialized, so I've got the specialized demo for a down here and the enduro here. And yeah, they're pretty sick. Fairly <laughs> similar, so it's easy to change between. Mm. Is that yeah. like a, are you, is the whole family on specialized? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dad found a love for specialized at the minute, so <laughs> they probably get pretty... on board. It makes some pretty sick bikes. Um, yeah. Is it hard to find like a setup or because you, how tall are you again? I can't remember. You're not. Um, not very. I'm about 168. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Is it pretty yeah. hard to kind of find a setup and get a setup sorted for you? Look, it might be. I'm pretty relaxed though, so I kind of like. <laughs> ride whatever it is <laughs> and dad would be like oh my god at least you've like broken this and i've felt but pretty flexible with my bike setup <laughs> which i'm not sure if it's good or not but yeah it goes either way like it's either someone's really like into it or they just don't care at all like, yeah. it's, it's, one, it's no one's ever in the middle so you, are you on a what size demo would you be on then like the s1 i'm an s2 yeah s2 (laughs) which seems to fit well and is that mullet or is it uh yeah uh, 
Yeah. Other than corn is so nice. <laughs> Did you go from 27.5 to mullet or have you run a full 29 yet? Yeah, I went from the 27.5 to a mullet. So. Yeah. Did you notice much difference? Oh, the first time I tried calling, cornering it, I just like fell over. I was like, oh, I don't know how to turn this thing. It just felt like <laughs> different, but yeah, I prefer it now. Yeah. Find the front end, just got more traction and just rolls over stuff, everything. Yeah. Much nicer. Oh, it just gets over everything. It's so nice. So good to ride. And is the, the enduro, that would be 29er front rear? Yeah. Yeah. So pretty nice. <laughs> You're not thinking about going mother on that one? No, nah, I don't think so. Keep the big <laughs> wheels for pedaling up. Make it easier. <laughs> <laughs> you, re you really don't like that pedal up, do you? <laughs> <laughs> it's not my favourite, though. <laughs> Have you got have you got on the knee bike yet? It's good. Uh, it's good. I, right. I sometimes steal mum's one, <laughs> take it up into the bush, but not yet. So yeah. everyone in your family's riding. That's pretty that's pretty sick. Yeah. It's really cool. Like we'll all go out on weekends together as the whole family, which is like mm. we rare but so cool. That's sick. And do you so you don't do anything kind of quirky with like your bike setup or anything? You just kind of run it as it goes. Yeah, like how we get it is pretty much how I run it. Like we're changing stuff over on the bike, but other yep. than that, like just run it how it is. So. And is it the full S Works setup for both of them, or you just? Yeah, pretty much. There's like one or two components that we've switched over, but yeah, okay. Or do you yeah. like to switch around? Do you have a Shimano or a SRAM preference or anything? Or Sorry? What was that? Sorry, it kind of just glitched out. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It's Victorian internet. Um, <laughs> do, you, do you prefer SRAM or, or Shimano or anything? Or like what do you kind of switch out on your bikes? Um, I'm pretty sure we've got Shimano. <laughs> <laughs> Dad kind of does all that, yeah. <laughs> but I'll just ride what I get. Probably not the best. I probably need to look at my bike a bit more, but. Uh, Is your dad really just mind. like switching yeah. out? Is your dad just switching out his <laughs> old parts onto yours and getting your new bits? Yeah, pretty much. I don't mind. He's a pretty good <laughs> Nick. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, <it's good. laughs> um. Why, like. What do you kind of, I guess, like a couple of things that I'm getting from, from the conversation is like, it's hard for you to kind of think about where to go for sponsors and how to get to overseas and, and stuff like that. And being one of the, oh, I think you're the youngest rider I've had on here. What do you think is kind of needed to help young riders, especially like young ladies get into the sport and then progress? from like racing here to overseas? Like what could help you? Um, I'm not too sure. I think, oh, <laughs> tricky. Um, I think just with the Vic series, so like getting girls into the sport, how they've added a junior women's category. Like I think that's just so good for junior girls instead of being like, oh my God, I have to race elite. Like it's just another alternative, which is like a bit less stressful. Which is really cool. Um, for getting overseas, though, I'm not sure. Like, I just feel like there's not much said about it. And like, you talk to the elites and things, and they've like all gone and they get over there. But from a genius point of view, I'm just like struggling to like how you get over there, especially with COVID. Mm. I think it's a lot self-driven. But yeah. Do you think there's like a, an avenue for someone like to maybe write or? or sort out something that kind of helps the juniors get overseas, maybe not just Oz cycling and stuff like that. Cause Oz cycling has got a lot to deal with at the moment, but yeah, it's kind of hard. I found it hard just trying to find some information for myself, let alone trying to be a junior, yeah. trying to sort all that out. Yeah, for sure. Like a trip advisor kind of thing, but for like <laughs> yeah. racing to get overseas, yeah. it would like probably be quite handy. 
and sick. just like knowing which races you want to go to or think would be good on the start that's like tricky as well but oh. do, you, do you know how you qualify for a world cup and stuff like that do you have any idea of how that goes <laughs> oh, I have a slight idea. Yep. Um, <laughs> hope I do well and get the points at the races in the too much. As far as that, I'm not that everything. good. Yeah. Just winning everything. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah, I just think it's it's kind of interesting from your perspective that it's hard for you to find that info. And yeah, you, you understand how the national cup works as well. Um, not fully. Yeah. Like, I have a rough idea for it all, but I'm not too switched on with it all. But, yeah. You're lucky in Victoria because that's where 90% of the good National Cup races are. So, you're pretty lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a mind. Yeah. Game. I just think, yeah, it's very interesting being able to ask someone that's in the junior category what, what, what they kind of need. Um, do you have, like, anyone who's guiding you through like your racing and stuff, or are you just basically following your dad and your brother and, and everything like that? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> and like going riding with faster friends and trying to catch them and things, I guess, just like helpful. Mm. And I think cause I'm so competitive, I will like, I won't not try and catch them. I <laughs> will always go hard, but yeah, not really. Was your dad racing at a, a pretty elite level or? Um, he's gone to like the Masters EWS ones, but yeah, he used cool. to do well in his Super Masters, but not really. He only kind of got into the sport 20 odd years ago, I guess. A while, but. I think that's oh, pretty much when the mountain bike was invented. So, yeah. Um, and your brothers, are they kind of up at the pointy end or? Can be. <laughs> <laughs> no, one's like, all right. Yeah. One the jumping. I didn't want to offend him next to me. But <laughs> <laughs> no, and the other one's pretty good. Still yeah. a bit quicker than me. So with all kind of four of you there, is that what makes MP Factory Racing? I think that was like the, the family <laughs> kind of racing thing. Yeah. So that was like my older brother. Wanting yep. to be like, oh my god, we've got a whole family racing. Let's like do this. And so with our like clothing sponsor, we've like, well, mainly my older brother Matthew, but they've organised this MP Factoring Racing team thing. I guess <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Are you guys going to be the next Athertons? You reckon? Or, oh, or oh, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Maybe. That's some pretty. That's some pretty big goals. Those guys are killing it. But, yeah, that's pretty high. Who? So you've you you're following like Tracy and and Valley and and stuff that Sean as well for the for the women's. But who do you reckon's? Who's your favourite kind of World Cup rider at the moment? Oh, I don't know. There's so many, and oh, I don't know. I think they're all like so sick to watch ride and they've all got their own like little styles and need. But... Yeah. <laughs> if you were to make like who, top three, oh. who's your top kind of three? Oh no, I'm not good at picking favourites. Um, oh, look, I think Greg Menard just because he's been in the sport and he seems to be a common favourite. I think he's such a good role model as well. And then You've got like Troy because he's just been so consistent for like the past few years at World Cups, like, and that's just insane to hold that level. And then like Varley as well for a girl, yeah. like, she's just insane. Like first or well, second year in the league, and she's like already taking top spot with a crash. Like yeah. that's just insane. Yeah, yeah. That's a pretty good list. That's a pretty damn good list. <laughs> Troy's, yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch Troy this year. I think he's put in a lot more work than he usually would, and he's he's fast. Yeah. So what do you, I guess we'll start wrapping things up a little bit, but 
what are your kind of goals? Like we've spoken about a little bit, but where do you want to kind of take your, your racing for the next kind of couple of years? Oh, I would love to get overseas and like race a few world cups and things and see how they go. But you know, Oh, we'll see what happens. So that, that would be the ultimate goal and see how well we can go over there and just like mm. compare yourself to those other girls who are like smashing it over there, which would be like interesting. And yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe try and look at some more sponsors. Like, ah, pretty flexible, but yeah. Yeah. And I guess like it's kind of an odd question because you're so young, but you are shredding and, and you're, you're going so fast. But what advice would you have for for any, I guess, younger girls or anyone that, any ladies or anyone that wants to get into racing like and, and riding bikes and, and getting fast? Yeah. What advice would you have? Oh, just give it a go. Like, even if it's on, like, the rail trail, like, it's just not that mm. I love the rail trail, but it, it's good about the start and, like, just your local mountain bike park. Like we ran into like this random girl in um, Tassie and she was like broke up with her boyfriend and she like said she got a bike and started riding and it was like the <laughs> best thing she ever did. <laughs> just describe bikes. Like they're just so fun. And yeah, just give it a crack, I guess. You yeah. won't know until you try. So yeah. And what about getting faster and riding faster? What advice do you have? Um. I don't know. I personally think like following faster people and following their lines and getting an idea of how they do it just gives you a better perspective on things and helps you as a rider and then leading yourself and pushing yourself like stimulate a race run sort of thing sometimes because that's mm. always like fun as well, <laughs> depending on who you are. But yeah. Yeah, exactly. And We'll, we'll wrap it up with one more question and it seems to be like the hardest for, for a lot of people, but um, what music do you listen to? Like what gets you motivated? Say it's raining and you don't want to go riding, but you have to, or you kind of, you're not having the best day studying oh. or something. Like what, what music do you listen to if you listen to anything? Um, got a bit of indie pop or like these re- random really happy playlists that, just get you in the mood and what you just then got so much energy and you're just like, right, I'm going riding. This is it. Yeah. I'm going into the rain. And I don't know. Or I like look at my Instagram and be like, Oh my God, this girl's just gone on this ride. I have to go too." like <laughs> competitive <laughs> yeah. mindset kicking in. But yeah. That's pretty funny that you like watching Instagram and someone else is riding and that you just want to <laughs> them by going riding yourself. That's pretty, that's very interesting. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favorite band or anything you're listening to, or is it just that genre? Oh, I like a bit of Teenage Jones, but nah, yep. it changes weekly depending on how I feel. Yep. <laughs> so good. Rad. Um, well, yeah. yeah, thanks. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your day to come on and have a bit of a chat. Yeah. Is there any anything else you wanted to cover or any sponsors you oh. want to thank or anything? I'm uh, pretty good. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. That's all right. We'll have a chat in about a year or two after your first World Cup. <laughs> yes. Hopefully we can get overseas. <laughs> Perfect. Um, Thanks yeah. so much, Elise. We'll speak soon. And I'll, uh, I'll let you know when this is ready to go out. Sweet. Thank you so much for having me. That's yeah. all right. We'll speak soon. Yeah. Thanks to everyone for supporting the podcast, Canyon, Dirt Surfer, NS Dynamics, Frank DeParrell, Two Up Bike Co, Fist, Crush, and of course, Manscaped. Don't forget to use the code Beyond the Tape at all the checkouts, get your discounts. All those discounts and using the code just gives us an idea of who's actually using what I advertise. Um, hopefully you guys all enjoy the products you're getting and thanks to those guys thanks for supporting them because when you support them you support us by keeping this podcast running it's not cheap and not easy anyway thanks for that we've got another big episode coming up real soon and you're gonna love it cheers